my end. Who knows? See if any of you guys actually tune back in. Let's see, much better. All right, that's good. Audio sounds better. Uh-oh, why'd I get a sad face? Am I clicking buttons? Am I clicking the wrong thing right now? <laughs> I don't know if I'm live. Ah. Corona's attacking the Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. That sounds better. Okay. That makes me feel... Okay, you're not drowning underwater now. <laughs> I got to figure out. It's probably because I'm boot camping this. Uh, so I run Streamlabs OBS, and you kind of have to go through uh, Windows to use that. I have a beta for the Mac side of things. I have a Mac. So because I'm screwing around with it too much, I think I'm jacking some settings up. That might make things not so fun. <laughs> Before your mic sounded worse than Adam Gase call and plays. Ugh, that's terrible. DMAC. Corona's attacking the Wi-Fi. Ah, all right. Let's get the phone number up on the board. Take some phone calls. Answer some of your uh, some of your questions. And what you guys are thinking about out there in Jets land. Just gotta figure out which one is it. There we go. All right, first phone number on the. Whoop, that person got booted. Sorry. All right, phone line is up and ready to go. Try to keep it short. We'll try to keep it like two, three minutes a question. Call from Peter. Peter, what's good, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. Ryan, it's been a long time, man. I know, it's been a while. What's on your mind? Well, man, first off, I just wanted to say that I'm looking forward to this season. That's one. And the second thing is, what's the status on Logan Ryan? Oh, man, I wish I knew the status on Logan Ryan right now. This whole, like, Manish Meta ball tease that he had going last week really has me frustrated. I was hoping that we could really be all full full bore on this and uh now with deandre baker getting arrested and possibly never playing for the giants again does logan ryan wind up in the giants uniform instead of the jets uniform does miami still wind up being a player in this contest with his former coach down there i don't know i don't know what's going to happen i'm not going to lose like too much sleep over like not getting him but it would it would be nice we need corner help if we don't get him, I would still like to get a Vinnie Curry or a Warford or Everson Griffin. Like, there's oh, other players Warford, I still want to get. A, oh, man, if we get Larry Warford, that would be icing on the cake for the line. It'd be nice, especially since you could really replace him with uh, Winters salary-wise, so you're not really losing anything on your salary cap. And then with the $11 million, Yeah, and then the $11 million you're going to get back from Tremaine Johnson if you allocate that towards Logan Ryan – you basically sit where you currently are, but you have two more players that, in theory, should be better than what you previously had. That's true, man. That is so true. But what do you think it's going to take? Like, you know, do you see us getting making a move like probably next month when we do get that $11 million, or maybe earlier than that? Yeah, I, I think we're going to try and make some type of move. I could see Logan Ryan waiting until June 1st because he thinks the Jets could offer more money at that point. Uh, I think... Vinny Curry might come in later. Jason Peters. I don't know if Jason Peters is really going to be an option. If Peters comes in, you got to think Peters I mean, starts on the have left a side. With Jason Peters, but at the same time, like I really don't think there's no need because I really want to see what George Fant can do. Oh, I, I agree. I think Fant, with the money he's getting paid, was brought in to start, and I think Becton, you know, is probably going to start as well. So where does Peters fit in on there? Like I, I wouldn't mind those three competing or those three starting in some capacity and one of them moving to guard um i don't know peter seems like less of a likelihood now that we have becton 
but I would I would be okay with it. Is there yeah, is there I mean, is there a player you want? The is there? Well, oh, absolutely. I do like that. Like I, everything I've heard from Philadelphia in regards to Jason Peters is that they absolutely love him, and he is a, an absolutely amazing captain. So I would be for bringing that in, especially if he's only going to cost you like ten million dollars. But then you're mm-hmm. talking about three tackles that are going to be making pretty good money, and you can only start two of them. So there's. Mm-hmm. But we'll the player see. that I really want is definitely Larry Walford because it's not an everyday thing where you see a three-time pro bowler getting cut like that. Yeah, and it's also – it's not like he was cut because of skill. I mean, he was getting a little bit slower, and he was never very fast to begin with, but it's because they needed cap space more than anything else. Like, I would be all for making this move. I think it's an instant upgrade over Brian Winters. And he's played in, I think, 15 games or hasn't missed more than three games in a season in, like, his three-year stretch, which is, you know, pretty solid. I don't know. I, I would bring him in. I, I think the the speed is going to be a concern, and I think that may be why we don't make that sort of connection because Fant is a pretty fast guy. You got uh, Becton, who's become a very, very fast guy. I I think we could be looking towards speed, but I, I would make the move. I think it seems like it makes sense to me. And I also wanted to bring up the fact that, like, I've been hearing some news that Ed Oliver from the Bills got arrested, and he might be looking at suspension, and it's most likely we don't have to deal with him in week one. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because I don't know if that's going to take effect this season because Chris Herndon got pulled over for a, it was either DUI or DWI, and got his suspension last year, but the the infraction happened one year before that. So does Ed Oliver and Quinn and Williams do they have to wait a year to let all the legal kind of stuff, you know, go through and then they deal with it next season? I, I don't know if we're gonna see it this year. See, I don't know because at the end of the day Nelson had a license just for a different state. Oliver didn't. He don't have no license whatsoever. Yeah, I yeah, would it shock me if Quinnen didn't get any games? No. I, I think Oliver's probably going to get at least a game, but I think they're going to let the legal system work its magic because it's kind of a, a good cop-out for the NFL to sort of delay this issue and not really bring it up this season. Like, hey, we're going to let the, the police handle it, and by the time a year you know, from now, it's not quite as uh, hot topic, I guess. Mm-hmm. All right, dude. Pretty much, man. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm going to get to the next caller. Boom. You've been ejected from the cockpit. James Carney says, what is my all-time NBA starting five, sixth man included? I'll be honest. I am not a good NBA aficionado. Like I am, I I could talk football for days, but I would be, uh, I would not be a very good person to have this conversation with as far as um, starting five or starting starting five plus a sixth man um off the top of my head in a very very amateur sort of fashion um i'll just say players i like it they, it's not that they necessarily all mesh together but man i would love to have like Shaq, mj kobe lebron and like oh god i don't even know those guys would be like incredible I don't know if adding magic is just too redundant at the point guard position. And then, like, maybe you throw Wilt in there, for, like, real old. Man, I'd, look, that's just it. Like, I'm so <laughs> I'm so bad at basketball, I wouldn't know if any of those players could even, like, feasibly go together. But let me know what you guys think. What would your, uh, your starting six be all together? Um, what are you guys talking about in the chat? You guys got <laughs> Rover is a special breed. I think I know what you guys are talking about. Uh, I have not watched any of Rover's stuff in quite some time. He is not very, not very happy with the whole uh, Sam Darnold thing, from what I've I've heard though. Um, bu- 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 who we got? Who we got? Call from Joseph from Texas. Joseph from Texas. What's up, dude? How's it going, Ryan? It's been a long time since I called in. Oh yeah, how you uh, how you been out in Texas? How's everything treating you as far as like uh, the quarantine period went? It's well, we've been isolating, just going to the river and doing some stuff. There you uh, go. How are you doing? 
I'm all right. It's not too bad. I just started going back to work about two weeks ago, and it's starting to get a little bit busier. Uh, it sounds like they're going to allow the golf course to go to foursomes instead of twosomes. So that's oh. that's pretty good. Well, I, I see you inching closer and closer to 10K. I just want to congratulate early because I've been here since you since the video you, you said uh, the Jets were going to land uh, Kirk Cousins. Oh, thank That's you. When I first started watching. Oh, that means a lot. <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm watching it ever so closely. I think I'm almost at 8,500. Uh, I'm hoping I could hit 10 by like the start of the season. If I can get it by like September, I'd be I'd be pretty happy. But there's not too much jet news to to make, so it's tough to gain any sort of traction. Yeah, and I oh my god, I hate Manish so much. That, oh, I can't stand that Logan him. Logan news. Uh, how is it? How have they not fired him yet? He's terrible. Everything he does is just, like, just not accurate, and he just stirs the pot. But that's why the New York Daily News probably likes him. He generates clicks. People want to see, you know, oh, the Jets believe they could get Logan Ryan. It doesn't matter if it's real or not. It's just sources, and it's like it could be the the janitor for all he knows, or it's like some intern that's like, oh yeah, I think Logan yeah. Ryan would make sense here. Technically, that's. That could be a source. I just I don't think Man- Manish has any inside knowledge of the Jets anymore with Joe Douglas there. Like I don't think he's privileged that knowledge. Yeah. And I think like if I had to pick reporters for the Jets that I I tend to believe more so than not, it's Rich Samini, it's um, yeah. Connor Hughes, and it's Ian Rappaport and Schefter. Those would be like the four guys that I sort of look at for correct news things. And that being said, Schefter retweeted. Manish Mehta's post, and then he wound up pulling it down. So it's just, I don't, I don't like Manish Mehta. I think he stirs the pot, and I don't think he's a good reporter. Yeah, uh, with, oh, I want uh, Larry Warford mm-hmm. from the Saints. That's a big thing that I'm, I'm really keeping my eye on, and I hope to never hear from Manish again. <laughs> have any news on that? Because I don't want him to stir the pot. And the, I think the consensus on the subreddit right now is like. Mm-hmm please fire him oh yeah they, they, i love seeing the the pictures of manish come up with like the clown wig and the nose yeah. on it's like ah <laughs> oh, this warms my heart like everyone kind of hates this guy all at once and it's not like i don't i don't ever want to wish anything negative on someone's career but like that i really don't like him he bugs the crap out of me all right so what do you think our overall record is going to be for this season Overall record, my gut feeling is nine and seven. I think we're gonna we'll surprise some teams. Like I think we'll play well in the the Kansas City game. I think we'll play well in like Seattle. Like I think we'll do well. I think we'll lose those games ultimately, and I think we'll beat some of the teams that we should beat. Nine and seven. I see us sweeping the Patriots, sweeping the Dolphins, sweeping, sweeping. It's gonna happen. That's how we're getting a nine and seven. It's the only way we're getting a nine and seven. I think you have to win your division first. And I don't think yeah, we're beating the Bills. You, I think we beat the Bills I'm once. Hoping we, I'm hoping to go to the Kansas City game with my dad. That would be I really cool. How, one to us. I was going to say, how far away is that from you guys? Yeah, it's like a 17-hour drive. Oh, Texas is absolutely massive. You could drive yeah. like an entire day and not cross the entire state of Texas. Like if you go from All tip right, to I'm tip. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave Ryan. Eject uh, me. Uh, you are ejected. Thank you so much for calling in. It's been fun. Call from Joe. Joe, what's up, dude? Oh, hung up. Sorry. You were about to be on the cockpit. Um, never predict losses for your team. Sixteen and zero. Then we're going sixteen and zero, boys. No, I. I think you can. Any team can win on any given Sunday in the NFL. I just have a hard time believing in the Jets until they prove it to me. And by and large, if you say the Jets are going to be less than eight and eight, you would have been right for the majority of the last few years. Call from. Hey, what's up, Joe? Welcome to the cockpit. Hey, Ryan. How you doing? Hanging in there. What's on your mind? Yeah, I want to ask you something. Sure, sure. Logan Ryan, I like him. Mm -hmm. You know, he seems like he's good with the blitz. You know, Mm -hmm. he gets sacks. And uh, he's a good tackler. Okay with interceptions. He's not a ball hawk. Mm -hmm. He's serviceable. 
But this guy wants, like, Pro Bowl money. This guy's never made the Pro Bowl in the six years he's played football. I mean, he hasn't even made alternate. Yeah, I don't I don't want to pay him $11 million a year. Like, I, when I heard his asking price was the same that he had last year, $10 million, I was like, okay, he wants 10 he'll take 8 If If he's not even thinking 8 and he wants 11 like, yo, go kick rocks. Like, we got Brian Poole. I'm more than happy with him on a $5 million a year contract. And let some of these younger guys roll the dice. I, I do think Logan Ryan would be a, a, a very good addition to our team. And if, you know, if yeah, $10 million gets it so. done, if $10 million gets done, what's another $1 million, I guess? But I was under the impression that he would be taking like $8 million, not going higher than the initial asking price, especially like two week, two months into free agency. Like who's going to pay you more money than what you initially asked for at the start of this? Like that just doesn't seem realistic to me. So I think he's yeah. still going to wind up around $8 million. Yeah, I think he would be a good addition. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I would love to have him, but not for that kind of money. Because like you said, he could roll the dice on the young guys when you got mm-hmm. like uh, Pierre Desir and um, – What's that, Quinn Wilson they just got to from the Colts? Yeah, they got Quincy Wilson and... Uh, Quincy Wilson, excuse me, yeah. And yeah. Bryce Hall. Yep, I'm excited about Bryce Hall. He's he's the type of player that you don't expect anything from year one but could be a pleasant surprise, and then you look forward to his year two. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay rolling the dice with some of our younger cornerbacks. I would prefer edge rusher, actually, before Logan Ryan. Like, if we could get more pressure on the quarterback, that'll help improve the play of our cornerbacks. So that's sort of the route I would want to go. Why don't they go for Yannick from Jacksonville? I don't understand. The guy is young. It's, like it's going to cost a old. lot. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to cost a lot in draft compensation. Like, I'm sure the Jaguars want a first-round pick. He's worth a first-round pick. He doesn't yeah, want to be the there. We had a good, uh, when's the last time we had a good pass rusher? Abraham? Yeah, that's the last time we had a really good one for sure. I mean, this guy would would I think he would be the best one since Abraham, and he's 25 years yeah. old. So if I would pay him 20 million dollars a year, I would give up a second round pick. If if I could give up a second round pick in Absolutely, May, man. yeah. If if you could tell me, hey, second round pick and May, and you got to pay him 18 to 20 million dollars a year, I'd do it in a heartbeat. I really would. Absolutely, I would too. Because I, you know what, he he's only going to get better in my opinion. Yeah. Now we're going to run into issues if we pay him like 20 million dollars. And then Jamal Adams wants seventeen million dollars, and then Sam Darnold's going to wind up getting like a two hundred million dollar deal by the time this thing's all said and done. I we're we're going to have some interesting money decisions to make because I'm pretty sure Mosley is under contract with us, at least his guaranteed money. Like we're locked into him for at least the next two seasons, uh, so yeah. we could be hurting a little bit come, you know, just after. So maybe that's why they're not pursuing Yannick. Uh, yeah. as far as a pure money standpoint. If they move on from Jamal, maybe that makes it a little more enticing. But I think if you're planning to pay Jamal as much as, as you're going to have to pay him, it's going to be tough to swallow maybe a $20 million I'll, I'll be honest, yeah, edge I rusher. I wouldn't pay him that much. I mean, I like Jamal Adams. I think he's mm-hmm. a very good player. He's one of the best safeties in the league. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless this guy is Ed Reed, yeah. or um, he's, he's a strong safety, uh, like a, uh, let's see, a Steve Atwater. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, or, you know, somebody like a Lynch from like, remember Tampa Bay. Sure, yeah. Look, yeah. I I think if Jamal like certainly that, that's I, different. You know, Hall of Fame material. I think Jamal certainly has that type of potential. The issue that I have with Jamal is that he's only three years into his rookie deal. Like we have leverage for another four years based on the amount of money he's going to want. So like, yeah. why would I want to overpay Jamal right now? Right. I mean, I would I would certainly guarantee his next four years if that locks him in. Or, like, give him a little bit more as, like, a, hey, thank you. But at the same time, I would have no problem waiting until after this season before we start talking negotiations. Because if you give him a deal after year three, now you're going to have to give Sam Darnold a deal deal after year three. You're going to have to give Quinn and Williams a deal after year three. And it's going to be one of this, you know, constant thing that you're always trying to catch up with. It's the same reason they had the holdouts with the... uh, the offset language in the contracts for the rookie deals. It's once you give it to one player, it's going to keep moving on. You know what the problem is? You, you remember when Dow Reeves held out? Yeah. Acting like a diva? Sure. You know, this, this stuff's been going on for a long time, you know? Yeah. I just, I think the Jets seem to always get players. They're in their prime, and maybe they're on the verge of superstardom, and then mm-hmm. they don't want to finish out their contracts. I don't understand these young players today. They never want to finish out their contracts. Mm-hmm. Listen, I can see the fifth year. Yeah. Like if they do a team option, you bust sure. the chops, but... You know, finish your first four years. You're still a millionaire. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I guess it's about, I guess it's because of the guaranteed money today yeah, that, that you're worried about. Well, that's definitely it, especially when you consider a career is so much shorter uh, than other professional sports, and the amount of value that Jamal brings to the Jets organization is drastically higher than that of the money that he's currently making. So there, there is a legit reasoning. Like Patrick Mahomes, he signed a five-year contract with the Buck or uh, with the Chiefs, but that he's going to vastly outperform that contract. And it's also a guaranteed contract. Like this is what you're signing into. You didn't negotiate this deal like you did with like the former first-round picks. Right. So, so I think having your opportunity to negotiate after three years is important. But I think you got to keep it in perspective and realize hey the jets could own you for the next four years so like let's not ask for the bank let's try to like give everyone a winning situation we'll guarantee all the money we were going to potentially offer you on these one-year deals that were not all strung together so it's it's going to be uh it's going to be interesting i i think there's i think after this season makes more sense for a jamal extension but i think you're going to see the jets sort of in a holding formation until they decide what's actually going to happen with that Hey, Ryan, we got to get you in the Jets front office, man, and make you a decent GM. <laughs> man, I would love that. I've, I've applied to a few jobs with the Jets. They just don't call oh, me did back. You? Oh, yeah, of course. They just never call me back. They're like, ah, well, hey, you screw know. that guy. <laughs> ah, you'll see. Hey, Maybe care, someone Ryan. will watch. Uh, Ryan, you have a good night. Yeah, you too. Take it easy, brother. Ah. Yeah, Jets, if you're watching and you need some random guy to yell Jet stuff on the internet, I'm your guy. I will not be filtered, though. I will say my mind, even if my mind is wrong. I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. Vinny. Vinny, what's up, brother? How's it hanging? What's up? Oh, just chilling. How are you enjoying your uh, your weekend? Or how was your weekend? Uh, I you know, I've been up to and, you know, keep myself occupied during quarantine with some guitar lessons. There you go, little by little. What was your uh, your take on the whole Manish Mehta, Logan Ryan BS? That was really annoying. I, you know, I was actually, I actually uh, was watching Good Morning Football during breakfast, which mm -hmm. I normally don't do because I just sit down breakfast with my family. So I pissed them all off. I pissed off the family watching that to see if we would find out any information about it. And I oh about. yeah. Yeah, he did. He wasn't gonna say anything. He was just gonna be like, "Oh, you know, I'm keeping my options open. I like the Jets." Yeah, he's gonna wait until we get that Tremaine Johnson money and see if we make our bid any higher. I think that's yeah. what he's waiting on. Yeah, you know. Oh, by the way, remember that question I asked you last week in the super chat? Mm, which one? The what? Who would be my players in the Ring of Honor? Was that yeah, that one? Oh, yeah. You know, I so I asked that one to Matt. Oh, Matt and. You know, considering his opinion of Adam Gaze, you can pretty much figure out who he added to the team. Was he saying head coach wise? Yeah. Like, so, so yeah, he picked a head coach one, instead I of. Rule. I made one rule. Mm -hmm. The Hall of Famers have to be on the team for five years. Okay. All right. I think, I think that makes it fair because then everyone's going to add Bill Parcell. Yeah, you'd be like Ed Reed. You'd have. You'd say. Uh, Ty Law, <laughs> fucking Brett Favre, like you're I just. Wasn't running a lot on there for one year. Oh yeah. Five. Yeah, you you throw all these huge names that the Jets had for for a season or two seasons. Yeah, um, five years. So then you know once I once I revealed to him that he could put coaches on there, he's like, mm -hmm. you know what? Yes, I, he said we view bank. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it makes sense, especially with where we're kind of at. As far as our uh, our head coaching he carousel sort of goes, ever and turned them into champions. So he yeah, if he did it twice, he could do it a third time. We need it. It's a totally different game, but we need it. We shall see. What was your opinion on uh, the Logan Ryan or Jason Peters? Are there any free agents that you're particularly kind of eyeing for the Jets at this I point? Definitely like Larry, I definitely like the guard from the guard that got cut from the Saints. Yeah, Warford. Top tier talent like that doesn't, at that age, doesn't generally come loose. Yeah, he's only 29 years old. I mean, if you consider him and Winters are the same age for almost the exact same amount of money, it's silly not to, like, add him. Yeah. We'll see. I totally agree. I mean, Winters is like, ugh. It's like, I respect him, but he's just not good. 
Oh yeah. Anything else on your mind, Vinny? Um. Uh, yeah. Well, I was thinking about the schedule. Of course, you know, I was looking at it. Okay. I think it's it's not as bad. I mean, the one thing I'm glad is we got the Raiders in December. So that's mm-hmm. pretty much a guaranteed win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Derek Carr's not good in uh, in the cold weather. He's got a terrible oh, record. Yeah, no, so that, that that's going to be fun, and uh, I know that yeah, that's going to be a yeah. And then I was looking at did you see Green Bean's uh, record prediction? Yeah, he was like, tw- what do you have? I said like twelve and four or something. Yeah. I think I didn't. I haven't watched it. I was talking to him about it, and I keep meaning to like sit down and watch it. I just I haven't yeah, had the no, chance. Like, I was watching. I'm like, wow, that that is really optimistic. I'm not even that optimistic. I mean, I think there are certain teams like I think that we can be like the three teams. I don't think we're going to stand a chance against are 49ers, um, Chiefs, and Seahawks. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, every other team I think we could beat. Like especially, I, I'm not really scared of the Rams for some reason. I think. I think some people are for some reason. They're just going downhill. I mean, especially look at those uniforms. Ugh. Oh yeah, it's ugly. Did you see the Jets uh, no, wound up? Laughing. There was I an was article from. from uh, well, there was an article that came out from uh, some fucking no name oh, publication yeah, that Jets said the Jets is the thirty second. Yeah, thirty second ranked uniform. I was like, how can you say the Browns are better? Like the Browns have a hideous uniform. I mean, there's only so much you can do with orange and brown, orange, brown, and white. Yeah, like it just made no sense to me. I don't no, know. I was laughing at so I was laughing at this, this Rams fan because I guess he didn't realize something. So it was like everyone's saying, "Oh, I guess the Chargers run LA now." It's like, so you know, the Rams are originally from LA and the Chargers are not. Which the irony of that is, the Rams are from Cleveland, and the Chargers had their first season in LA. And everyone was lap trolling him with that. We'll see. Dude, thank you so much for calling in. I'm going to get some more people. Vinny, you've been ejected from the cockpit. King Blaze, thank you for the super chat. He says, top three cornerback and safety duo in the AFC since 1980. Mine are Madison and Sertan. Sertain. Law and Smith. Glenn and Coleman. Malloy Jones. Adams May, Harrison Wilson. Oh, man, that's not too bad. Um, I don't... Hmm. Top three cornerbacks and safety combo. Hmm. May and Adams is a good combo. It really is. I wish we could have seen them a little bit longer. Like, I think this is probably the last year we get to see the two of them together. But, uh... Yeah, the Jets secondary. Remember when we went through a few years of just having god awful secondary play in terms of like safeties? I think Eric Smith was our top safety at one point after Kerry Rhodes left, and that was just miserable. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> not 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 always good. But uh, thank you for the super chat, King Blaze. Much appreciated. Um, let's take some more phone calls. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Try to. Answer a few more in here. Uh, hey, you, yeah, I think about the Jets jerseys being ranked 32nd. I don't I don't like that the Jets jerseys are ranked 32nd. That doesn't make any sense. I don't think the Jets jerseys should be ranked 32nd. I do think they're, like, worse than I think they could have been. Like, I think we missed the boat on that. But they're going to look a lot better if we start winning. To accept. Welcome to the cockpit. Hey, Ryan, what's going on? Ah, hanging in there. What's on your mind? Um, I just wanted to talk about free agency. Yeah, go for it. So, I love Warford. I take him over Peters. Yeah, I think so. At this point, it's it's such a... They're like 10 years apart. Nine years apart. Yeah. But also, I would... I don't want both. Like, I'd rather... Us, like, as much as O-line is definitely an issue, mm-hmm. I'd rather us see get Warford or Peters plus mm-hmm. corner or an edge. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's important to add another piece to this defense. Uh, Logan Ryan seems to be the best younger player that we could get. Like, I like Vinny Curry. I would like to see him come in on pass rush situations. Logan Ryan's more of a every down cornerback that can apply pressure as well. So I think, right. I, I think if you could add an offensive lineman, whether it be a Peters or a Warford, I think I would do that plus either a Logan Ryan or a Vinny Curry. 
And um, I have a question about that. So if Peters is the guy over Warford, and that might happen considering sure. Joe Doug knows him. Yeah. Um, do you think Becton would be starting? Or do you think we would do one of them at left, one of them at right? Or Peters at left, Becton on the bench to learn from him? So one thing that we got to watch last year with Peters starting and their Eagles, Andre Dillard, who they took at 26th, I believe, last year, he sat, on the, he sat on the bench. So if Douglas feels sort of the same way that Harry Roseman did, maybe they sit back in for a little bit, let Peters start, let Fant work the right-hand side. Ideally, you wind up having the top five offensive linemen start regardless. So if that winds up being Peters at left, Becton at right with Fant, Van Roten, Lewis, McGovern, Harrison, all kind of duking it out for the three middle positions. Um, you know, I'm all for that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, about the schedule? Yeah. What, what's your predictions for it? I'm, I'm thinking... Think, no, not the schedule. Sure. Um, the thing the last caller said, mm-hmm. I'm bringing in Parcells, Revis. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm excluding the five-year thing. Sure. And then I would like to bring in Gastineau and Abraham. Okay. Abraham, how long was he with? He was probably with us at least five years because I think we drafted him in 2000, 2000 or 2001. And then I think we traded him in 2005, 6. So he. Or do he, I want Belichick? Ooh, that's an interesting thought. Was Belichick with us for five? I don't think Belichick was with us for five years, though. Because he was, he was only coordinator. prior to the Parcells years. I don't know the entire story of Belichick. I don't know if he was here for a full five. Um, I don't know. I, I, look, I if, I, if, if you gave me, yeah, if you gave me top players, it's tough for me to really judge the guys that came before the time I was watching. Like, I've always heard great things of Gastineau and Klecko and, um, you know, Toon and Maynard. But it's hard for me and to Klecko judge that that. Player. But it's also weird to see like that NFL versus this NFL. Like I I definitely believe the players are way faster and stronger now than they were back in the day. Like I think if you put Adrian Peterson back in the time of like, you know, to the Namath era, I think he's gonna run silly all over people. Um, but I would say if I were if I were a Jets fan, I'd take Revis, Curtis Martin. Uh, but we have Le'Veon. There are bigger positions than need. Oh, you're saying for this year, though. So uh, I, I get what you're yeah. saying. You're saying to improve this team based on former players. Okay, so then you would, yeah, you would definitely take Gastineau. You would take Revis. Um, hmm. On the offensive side, maybe the Mangold. tackle. Yeah, you, you could argue Mangold. I was going to say... Um, Governor Winston Hill. Spot, there would be no need for Warford, right? Yeah, that's true. I would say Winston Hill at left tackle, like a, hall, a Pro Bowl left tackle or Hall of Fame left tackle, and then you just kind of reshuffle everyone else. Um, maybe you take a receiver. Maybe it's corner, receiver, edge rusher, and then one of the offensive linemen. Mangold might be it, or Mawai, one of the two. Yeah. Well, Mangold, once again, the thing you said about players being faster and stronger. Now, yeah. I love Kevin Mawai. He was great, but he's, he's undersized. So that Man, not work. I, he was just so nasty. Like, I would have a – I could see him playing well he's in any – he, he would take – I remember watching games where he had his hand all taped up and clubbed, and he would just, like, whip people in the side of the head and, like, just get them out of the way. He was incredible. Yeah. All right, brother. I'm going to get to some more callers. Thank you so much for calling in. And you have been ejected from the cockpit. Ah, you guys are just saying all your uh, all your things in the chat. You guys say Ferguson or Mangold on the line. These callers need more enthusiasm today, says FM. Drink some more coffee. Squint says Brandon Marshall. Marshall wasn't here for five years, I don't think. Nor is he in our uh, Ring of Honor or Hall of Fame. We have a run stopping D, though close to B being top 10, says King Blaze. Call from Albert. 
Albert, what's up, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. Yeah, what's up, Brian? Oh, hanging in there. What's on your mind? Um, I just have a question. Yeah, Who would shoot. you rather sign, Larry Warford or Jason Peters? Ooh, good question, good question. I would like Logan – Your wait, Larry Warford or Jason Peters? Larry Warford would be my first choice because it's a guard, and I think we have our tackle situation pretty much ironed out. Um, I like Jason Peters. I think – it wouldn't be a bad signing. I just think we create more of a log jam with him, Fant, and Becton. Uh, oh. Warford may be, may be an issue for us because he's not as athletic as some of the other players on our offensive line. So I don't know if he necessarily fits our scheme. So that would probably be a little bit more, uh, maybe more of a logistical issue. But I like Warford more than Peters at this point. Okay. Thank Good you. stuff. Thanks for calling in, brother. Much appreciated. Guys, if you have not entered to win the hat, shirt, or mug from the Jets Talk store today, head down into the description down below. There is a link to my Twitch. All you have to do is follow me on Twitch, and I will raffle off a hat, shirt, or mug for someone that follows me on that platform. So there's not too many people involved over there, so definitely hit that up if you want to win a uh, item from my store, and then we'll kind of go over it as we get to the uh, the final closing moments of the show. Call from Frank. Frank, what's up, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. Hey, how you doing, man? Hanging in there. What's on your mind? Nothing. I just want to see what your thoughts are on Adam Gates. I think he's going to do a pretty good job this year. Another I'm... year in the book. <sighs> Look, I'm hoping he does all right. It, for me, last year, I was not on the Adam Gates bandwagon. I thought we could have done better in the head coaching carousel. And when I look at last year objectively, I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that I don't think there's any head coach that could have come in and done better than what Gase did last year based on the injuries we had, Sam getting mono, and like just all the weird stuff that we had to deal with last year. This offensive line, McCagden drafting terrible like you know players. I, just, I think Gase has a better shot of doing better this year than he had at any point during the season last year. I agree, and I love the personnel. You got Heinz Ward in there. You got Greg Williams. I don't know. I just got a feeling Gates is going to turn it around. I know he's not a very likable guy. Mm -hmm. He's a narcissist. He's very cocky, but I think he gets his shit together, and he's going to help Darnold out a lot. Yeah, and that's just it. When I, when I kind of look at Gates from an outsider's perspective and you see, all right, Peyton Manning speaks very highly of this guy. Frank Gore one of the best running backs of all time, talks very highly of this guy. What am I, like, should I try to pay more attention to some of the little nitpicky things that we might see? Or should I focus on, like, these all-time greats like Peyton Manning and Frank Gore and realize, you know, Demaryius Thomas really approves of Adam Gase. I just, I think there's more to Adam Gase than Jet fans may want to believe right now. So I'm, I'm willing to give him a chance. Yeah, Alshon Jeffrey was very high on him as well. He predicted that Gase and Darnold are eventually going to bring a Super Bowl to our lovely city. Hopefully it happens. <laughs> oh, man, that's that's exactly what I want to hear. I, I like Alshon Jeffrey. If his contract wasn't so terrible and he wasn't always injury prone, I would have loved to have brought him in. Uh, but, yeah, I think these pros that like Adam Gase should speak volumes. And I think us getting five captains in a row at the tail end of this draft – and bringing in the types of personnel as we brought in in free agency really means that the Jets are building this culture and want to have guys that are buying into the system. And I think if if players don't necessarily buy in, they're going to find themselves on their way out pretty quickly. Definitely. Hey, am I the only one that thought that Le'Veon just did not look right last year? I felt like, you know, that year off, you know, him rapping, he just – he did not look right. He looked slow. Every time Bilal Powell would touch the rock, it would just be – he would be bursting, you know, down the field. It was just – I don't know. I did not like the way Le'Veon looked. I think Gates has a lot of, you know, may, maybe beef with Le'Veon based on the way that he was playing and how he conducted himself during practice. I, I would say this. I think that Bell – I think he was in shape 
did he look slow? Maybe because like we're used to more of a faster running back. He's a very patient running back, and that is not the type of back you need behind the offensive line we had last year. So I think we're going to see more from him. But I, I don't know if I necessarily believe that Bell took a step back because I watched times where he was just getting pounded behind the line of scrimmage and wound up getting like six, seven yards. True. Didn't, didn't happen often, but I would say I'll I wait till think, this year. I think is... No, go ahead. I apologize. I think I'll wait till this year to pass judgment on Bell, but I do think that he's gone after this year. I think his contract's too high, and I think Gase is going to want a uh, stable of backs as opposed to one top paid back. Because I've always felt that Gase likes the more bruiser type of back. Like who, you saw what Jay Ajahi did in Miami. That was mm-hmm. pretty remarkable. I mean, there, Frank you know, Gore. There, there were a couple games where he, you know, he ran for over 200 yards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a Frank Gore, exactly. I just don't see, uh, you know, Le'Veon Bell and Gase ever, you know, fitting in. I think you're going to see a lot more Le'Veon Bell in the wide receiver position. And I hope just so. Like a change of pace. Because I think Perry, um, what's his name, Perrin from Florida. Yeah. I think that's the type of back that Gase loves. He's 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 kind of like a Jay Ajahi in a lot of ways. Yeah, he definitely is more of a quick one cut type of back, like a Bilal Powell. Like when we were watching the highlights during the draft, I was like, all right, this guy reminds me of Bilal, and he seems to fit the blocking scheme better than what Bell was last year. But we also had a terrible line last year. So I I do think Bell's probably out after this season, and I think Gase is going to want to roll with P. Ryan. I think he's going to want to possibly bring in another back outside of that because I don't don't see Gore being here more than the one year. Um, But it sort of buys us a little bit of time before we have to make that decision. I appreciate it, Ryan. Take care, man. Love your show. Thanks, dude. Thanks so much for calling in. You've been ejected from the cockpit. Ah, you guys are great. Keep the calls coming. Call from Jason. Jason, what's up, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. Hey, Ryan. How you doing, brother? Nah, I'm hanging in there. What's on your mind? Uh, I'm just watching the stream right now, and uh, I was just wondering about the Logan Ryan... Mm-hmm. Walford and the the Jason Peters thing. Um, I don't know if we actually need Walford mm-hmm. and Peters right now. I feel like Ryan should be the the focus right now to get the cornerbacks like a good uh, veteran cornerback to <laughs> to learn under. You know what I mean? Yeah. I look, feel I... like the the O line. The O line got like McGovern and Van Roten and Fan mm-hmm. and all those guys. I feel like we need more of a cornerback situation, you know? Yeah, I agree. I would say at this point in time, cornerback and edge rusher are priority one and one B for me. Uh, I would not shy away from adding uh, Warford. I think Warford makes a little more sense because you could pretty much directly replace him with Winters and salary-wise and position-wise would make a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Peters at this well, point, I don't, I don't think makes a ton of sense. I think Peters at this point would be redundant and would just be a waste of salary cap space because ideally you want Beckton starting. But because of what happened with the Eagles last year, they had Andre Dillard sitting on the bench as their rookie that they took in the first round. So maybe Douglas tries to fall like follow suit with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, my other thing was we definitely got to cut Winter because there's no reason to keep him around at this point. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just it. I don't. I don't really like having winters on the team i think he's not healthy enough i think he's not very good either and he's tough but like may, like so maybe that personality in the locker room is something to to be said like if you're gonna not use the money that you're spending on him towards another player maybe it's just worth holding on to him as like a like a glue yeah, <laughs> like yeah, like yeah he's just kind of a guy that could step in uh knows the system knows the players the team respects him so I, I don't know. I think it's sort of the same sort of rationale with Avery Williamson. Like I really like Avery Williamson. I think he's played better oh, than what him. Brian. What he's, he's played better than what Brian Winters has played as. But I think the same argument could be had where we have a lot of money allocated for those positions, and could we get by maybe without him and save that money and go elsewhere? But if we're not spending that money on another player that's going to help us, why get rid of a player and weaken us? No, for sure, for sure. Is there a player that you particularly want? Is it is it Ryan is your guy, or are you thinking any other player that's out there? I I've been a Logan Ryan fan for a while. Like when I watched him on the, at that Titans game when they beat the Patriots and they made that miracle run and they 
to beat the Ravens. Like I mm-hmm. like I was watching Ryan that whole time, and I'm like, this guy could be a total Jets like he could be a Jets guy right now, and I think it would just make sense. Oh, the the final pick of Brady's career in New England being Logan Ryan and the Jets potentially being able to bring him in and just sort of like rub it in the Patriots face for an entire year would be enough for me to want Logan Ryan on this team. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on your mind, brother? Uh, I just, I'm just cheering you right now. Too, you're drinking a Bruce on a Monday night. So. <laughs> good, good stuff, brother. Take it easy. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, you've been ejected from the cockpit. You know what I'm going to do? Before I answer another question, I'm going to grab myself another Teddy Brewski. i got about another half hour, so I'm going to drink another beer with you guys. So give me two seconds. So no Corona. Decided not to do Corona. Decided to go with the uh, the White Claw right now. Pop. Ah, what are you guys talking about? Bills fan forever. Don't spam, dude. Don't spam. I like having you around. We're going to kick you out. Ah. Ryan drinking challenge. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a drinking challenge one day. I don't want to get myself kicked off the uh, the uh, the YouTubes. Waving the white flag. Grab me a brewski. <laughs> oh, God. What did Bill's fan forever say? I wish I knew what he said. Someone, uh, someone comment to me. Uh, guys, if you have not entered yourself in to win a hat, shirt, or mug from the Jets Talk store, head down into the description of this video and hit follow on my twitch page if you follow me on twitch you'll be entered to win a hat shirt or mug from the jet stock store so make sure you do that because last time we didn't get too too many people it was a nice uh nice little raffle and people like their stuff i know uh saw some guys in the chat that recently got some of their uh their merch from the store i think there was a discord mug in there call from this is King. What's up, dude? Welcome to the cockpit. Hey. What's on your mind? Um, I uh, wanted to make a point on um, uh, we're probably gonna get rid of Bell this uh, next year after this year because mm-hmm. uh, um, Philly uses uh, Jody uses a stable of backs, and yep. you know, um, Miami uses. I mean, when uh, Gates was. Uh, had Ajayi, he was, used the bruiser, but at the same time, the GM go. Uh, I think they, he's going to go a different route. Okay, what do you think we go with next year? Do you is there a I back you see, or go, do you think? I I think we're going to get a package of backs, just like how Philly uses their 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 running back table, so they don't you know spend um, fifteen million dollars on one person versus having three for three running backs at five six million dollars a piece, and it's just rotating them in. Yeah, I think I, I, I think a stable. Yeah, I think a stable of backs is going to be important because it's just the one of the positions that you just get beaten into the ground. Yeah, you get beaten into the ground. Try to like, you know, I hopefully Bell doesn't have to deal with a third and one, fourth and one type situations, and we throw Gore in there and just pound up the middle. Oh, Matt, there you are, yeah. Matt Curtis. That was my Discord mug. I knew it was yours. I was going to call you Curdy, <laughs> but. But I was gonna say, Curdy, Curdy bought, Curdy got a, a Discord mug from the Jets Talk store, and he sent me a picture of it, and I was like, "This is awesome! It looks really good." And I couldn't remember what your YouTube name was versus what your Discord name was, and I didn't want to confuse people. But thank you so much. Uh, sorry about that. What, uh, what else? Thank you, my, thank you for taking my call. But uh, I, I, last point. Um, sure. Who do you think has a higher leash? Um, you think Jody has a higher leash, or Gates has a higher leash? Because you know, it's a little. Um, funny because Gase got Joe the job. Sure. I think 
but Douglas definitely has the longer leash. It's a reason why he got a six year contract and Gase only got a three or a four year contract. It's definitely going to be Douglas for sure. Douglas is going to get his chance to sign his own head coach or re-sign Adam Gase at some point. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ryan. You're doing a good job. I've been following you for a while, so um, I'm, I'm going to try to call him whenever I see you guys online. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate the call, brother. Stay safe. You've been ejected from the cockpit. Right as you were about to say something, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um Gase makes no adjustments. Ah, it's frustrating. I know. Uh some of the some of the games were not not fun to watch last year with the play calling. Ain't no laws when you're drinking claws, says Joe Well McKenzie. Cheers. I don't know if I should feel prissy for drinking white claw, but it is so delicious and so light. Call from Mike and my sports MC. Mike, what's up, brother? How you doing? What's going on, man? I was about to give up on trying to call in tonight. <laughs> a lot of people calling in. Yeah, I got a bunch. Um, What's on your mind? So I kind of was getting in the comments there a little bit and um, mm -hmm. wanted to be able to explain it, so I had to call in. Sure. So we was talking about when everybody was talking about Warford, and mm -hmm. I was not saying that he's not better. I know he would be an immediate upgrade on this team. Sure. What I'm trying to say, as a fellow YouTuber out here trying to talk to the fans, Oh yeah. it's just I'm trying not to get people's – you know, ahead of themselves here. If you look mm -hmm. at what Joe has done and the types of players that he's bringing in, the reasons the Saints cut him is the exact reasons I don't see Joe Douglas wanting to bring him in. So the mm -hmm. fact that he's not a, a, that athletic, he's one of the slower guys yep. in the league, I, I can see that as Joe just not even really wanting to go target him. He wants to build this team in his image, mm -hmm. the styles he likes. Yeah, I think I think the speed's going to be an issue. That was the biggest thing for me. Like, I think he's he's an upgrade from like what we had from Winters, but I don't know if it's the direction that Douglas wants to go. And if Warford's looking for a two or maybe a three year deal, that's that's going to be an issue for us. And I don't know if it's necessarily what Douglas wants to do. I think he wants to keep the one year deals, kind of see who fits, who makes sense, and uh, sort of go from there. I, I agree. I think Warford's probably. A little bit more of a reach at this point i think logan ryan or an edge rusher makes more sense yeah no that's definitely where i think they're going to go as well i could also see them potentially saving some money um to look at if a veteran wide receiver gets cut to try to add some additional depth at that position i yeah. think joe's trying to keep himself with that flexibility and um, especially with how many injuries we had last year i think that's why some of these guys like winters and mm -hmm. even avery williamson i think that's why they're still on the team because yeah. they haven't had their doctors be able to look at any of these guys. So, they, you know, they don't need the money right now. So I think they're going to kind of hold that in their back pocket for the time being. Yeah, that's just it. There's no no dates that they need to cut Williamson or Winters by. They can cut them at the end of the preseason and save the same amount of money that they would if they cut them right now. So why why make a hole on your roster? Who knows? Maybe Mosley goes down with an injury at some point during the uh during the beginning part of the preseason and then we need avery williamson for the year so there's no reason to create a hole when there's you know no need like you're not using the cap space anyway exactly and the other point i wanted to talk on i think you you're falling a little too much in love with yannick i think uh what you were willing <laughs> to give away with i would not be very happy with that second oh, yeah. round pick and giving him top dollar i think is just way mm -hmm. too much i think he's um, gonna get top he's dollar gonna... anyway so and, and and when you look at some of the right. other pass rushers that have gotten those kind of deals they're anywhere from a late first to a second to a third round pick so maybe if you deem yannick as like a third round pick and the money i could get on board with that i would give up a second and the money you could talk yeah, me into giving up may <laughs> even as, as elite um because like i said he had one year we had over uh where he had double digit sacks sure. he was on a team that was nicknamed saxonville mm -hmm. so there's a lot of people that were getting after the quarterback Sure. Um, which makes it easier on any one individual when you have multiple people teams have to worry about. Sure. So that's always something that worries me when they're going from being one of the guys to having to be the guy. Mm -hmm. Usually your sack numbers don't go up when that happens. Yeah. So I don't view him as like a Cleo Mack type of impact on the edge. Yeah, and I also would not give up what they gave up to get Cleo Mack. Like Cleo Mack year right. one, very good. Cleo Mack year two, buyer's remorse. <laughs> like that's like I, I could i could see us if you give someone a 20 million dollar contract the chances of them living up to that 20 million dollar contract is slim to none 
like the value for those guys are going to be on cheap rookie deals or one year contracts. So you're not really going to sign Yannick expecting to get twenty million dollars worth of production. But if you can get, you know, fifteen million dollars worth of production from him as a uh, you know a young pass rusher for four or five years, whatever it is, I think that's what you kind of gamble on. Yeah, like I said, I just don't want to give up. With, with the area that we're in, I'm, I'm a big believer mm-hmm. in when, when you're not one player away, you don't give up a high draft pick and big money for one player. Yeah, I, sure. I think that that's a move that if you were just that one player away is when you make that kind of move. Yeah, I would say it would make more sense for like the Giants or a team that still has some good cap space. They got the young rookie quarterback, even under a deal cheaper than ours. Uh Barkley may not get his deal immediately. He may get it, I guess, after next season. But I think that where else could you see Yannick going? He's not going to stay in Jacksonville. I don't think he's even going to play for him. And, I mean, that that's the thing. It's like, you know, everything that he said and all the stuff that he came out, I think it's going to – it comes to the point, like you said, where he's going to play for them. They're not going to want him to play for them. Mm-hmm. And maybe his price comes down uh, to a point where you can get him for – a third or maybe two fourths or something like that. I doubt that you'd be able to get him for that, but it's a mm-hmm. point where he's on a one year franchise deal. They're, they're going to lose him at the end of the year. He may not play at all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe they just don't want to happen to them. What happened in the Steelers with Le'Veon Bell, where they just ended up getting nothing. In return. Sure. Yeah. If I, I trust Joe Douglas and Phil Savage and all the guys we have in our front office, because it seems like they're really well plugged into the league. Cause it, we haven't really overpaid for anyone this year where we had, with McCagnan, like I felt like McCagnan was just sort of throwing darts at a dartboard and would just overpay because he felt like he had to overpay. Like if Douglas has his pulse or has his finger on the pulse of the league and knows what guys are kind of worth, then maybe that means the trade market he'll understand where Ndokwe could go or what he could be worth. If that's a third round pick and $16 million or, you know, whatever it is, I'm cool with letting him play out the franchise tag this year and like maybe look to tag him next year i think the tag this year for him is like 16 million if i'm not mistaken i think it's um i could be wrong let's see let me see i'm gonna pull it up real quick over yeah yeah, while you're pulling that up i I just gotta say though sure as jets fans i mean it's just great seeing like joe douglas was such a highly touted like rising star in the ranks we got mm-hmm. him over here, and then not only did we get him, who a lot of people around the league thought was going to be one of the top execs, but he brought in some really well-respected guys, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. with Savage and some of the other guys that he brought in. So it's just good to have a competent front office right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. And ju- I just looked up Yannick's contract. He's making like just under $18 million on the franchise tag, so you're not going to franchise tag him again. That's a lot of money because I think it's 120% right. yeah, no, or hundred. I think it's 120% of the contract he got this past year. Yeah, you're probably looking at $20 million if you franchise yeah. him again. Oh, easily. All right, brother, I'm going to get some more calls. Thank All you right. so much for calling in. Guys, if you've not followed NY Sports MC, make sure you follow Mike. He's got a good Jets channel over there. Uh, GV Reflex, thank you for the super chat. Look time, no see friend, Mims hype. That is words that make no damn sense. But I like Mims hype. I'm all about the Mims hype. Uh, guys, if you've not followed me on my Twitch, down below in the link in my description, click on my Twitch page, follow me, and it'll get yourself entered to win a hat, shirt, or mug from the Jets Talk store. I'm going to raffle that off at the end of the night. That'll be in about 20 minutes or so, and then I'll pick someone from that following. Call from Eli. Eli, what's up, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. Hey. All right, so I, I, my biggest thing that I really want to ask you about mm-hmm. is, right, so you know how the schedule came out, like I think it was last Thursday, so you know people are pumping out record predictions for sure. like, everyone. And I'm watching these people. They're making predictions for like the AFC, and they see the Jets going 3-13. Thir- and 13, And I don't understand how you can say that. It makes no sense to me. I saw, there. I think it was USA Today had the Jets at like, I don't know if it was 3-13, and 13, but I think it was like 5-11 and 11 or 6-10. Six and, six and 10. And I was like, six and ten is kind of the floor that I see the Jets like having. Like I see Sam Darnold as the best quarterback in this division. I think the Bills are the best team in this division. I think the Patriots and Dolphins are both better coached, and the Bills. I think all three teams are better coached than the Jets right now. 
but I have a hard time seeing the Jets not splitting and at least going 3-3 three and three in division. Like, I think the Jets are at least going to do that. So that's three wins right there. We beat Oakland last year. I'm not afraid of – I mean, I guess you could be afraid of the Cardinals to an extent, but, like, I'm not terrified. I'm not terrified of the Rams anymore. I think you can beat the Broncos. I think you could beat the Chargers. Like, there's a lot of games out there that you could win. Could I see 6-10? and 10? Sure. But I, I don't see 3-13. and 13. I think that's way too low. I really think the Jets are going to be better, uh, barring like some type of, you know, the team, like Sam gets COVID, and then all of a sudden our, our season gets thrown for a loop that way. But I, I think the Jets are going to be way better than a 3-13 and 13 team. Because the only teams that I can see is definitely like 100% losing to are the Seahawks and the Chiefs. Because I don't think we're going to beat the 49ers, but I think we have a chance because they rely on their run. And we have mm-hmm. a top-run defense in this league. If we can shut down that their run game and mm-hmm. make Jimmy Garoppolo throw the ball in uncomfortable situations, I think we might be able to win that game. Sure, and they're going from West Coast to East Coast. So that, that creates another hurdle in and of itself. So I could... I could see it. I mean, do I, I think we'll be the underdog for sure, but I could see it. The, honestly, the Bills games, I think they, they're they going to be favored in both of them, but it would not shock me to see the Jets beat the Bills in you know either of those games, especially the Jets' home game against him. If you're looking at – I think we beat Denver. I think we beat the Chargers. Um, I don't think we beat Seattle. I don't think we beat um, – Oh, God. Who else is in the division? The Rams, the Rams, Charger, Chiefs. Chiefs were not beaten. I Realistically, 6 and 10 is my floor. I could see 10 and 6 if everything kind of breaks the right way. I think 9 and 7 is really my, my best guess. I think we could – man, I don't know. It's tough. I could, see us playing, I could see us playing a lot better in all our games, but – also having a worse record which winds up being the six and ten or seven and nine realm in my opinion the only way we go ten and six is if our line goes goes actually really smoothly and like the mm-hmm. Connor mcgovern and like the george fan they all go good sure and bill mims and rashad perriman become number one they become not number ones but at least like sure. number two receiver that's the only way i could see us becoming 10 and 6 and everything has to go right like you said yeah we'll see here's how i look at it i see this i see the schedule and i say okay the schedule's definitely harder than it was last year last year we were a bottom five uh schedule this year we are a top three schedule so it's it's definitely different there but when i see who we have lost okay wide receiver is perriman and mims better or worse than just robbie anderson i'm gonna say it's probably better with those two guys over just having Robbie. When I look at the offensive line, do I see last year's offensive line and I see this year's offensive line? Which one do I think is better? I think the offensive line is better now. The offensive line is going to help Le'Veon Bell. It's going to help this passing game. It's going to help this running game. I think Sam Darnold last year versus Sam Darnold this year. Do I take the healthy one this year over the mono one last year? Yeah, I'd probably do that as well. So the, the Jets defense, again, we'll, we'll look at that. Do I take the Jets defense last year without Avery Williamson and without C.J. Mosley, or do I take this year with Avery Williamson and C.J. Mosley? Like, I, they all seem like we've gotten better in all these different positions. If by, you know, even by not adding players, but just by getting players back and healthy, I feel like the Jets should be better. Yeah, because I personally, for the wide receiver corner thing, I was never a big fan of of Robbie Anderson. I always thought he was kind of a one-trick pony that most defenses can kind of control. So I definitely mm. like Denzel Mims and Rashad Perriman much better. And I definitely think our offensive line is a huge amount better. Mm-hmm. And those were like two big weaknesses on offense. And then you have on the defense, linebacker was good, and it's going to get better. And corner, mm. I think cornerback position got a lot better. It got a lot more depth. And I think we got Pierre this year. If he's banks on it, we have to bank on his upside. But assuming that he hits his upside, we ha- don't have that bad of a cornerback core. I would say at the very worst, I think our cornerback core from last year to this year is the same, if not better. Like I think we could definitely be better in that respect. I don't think we're going to be worse than we were last year. I don't think we're going to like. There's not. I don't think there's a position on the field that I see us being worse in this year than we were last year like maybe you could argue that with better teams our secondary might get roasted a little bit more than with the teams we faced last year but 
I mean, I'll be honest. I think the Jets are in a pretty good position to at least play better um, across the board on all all the units. It, yeah, and I also wanted to ask you about mm-hmm. Larry Warford because sure. I'm looking at him. Um, he he's he's made the Pro Bowl three consecutive times. Yep. He's only 29. You have like two more years of him. He doesn't seem to have any problems like personality wise. I don't understand why he's not signed by anyone in general and or at least by the Jets. Yeah, I think he's I think he's a really good player and I think part of it is teams trying to allocate some of their cap space and not exactly sure what's going to happen going into the season like there's a sort of a holding formation. A lot of teams sort of have penciled in who their starters are going to be in some respect because of the uh, the draft and because of how they spent in free agency and the returning players. So there's there's a lot of moving pieces here. He's only been a free agent now for maybe, what is it, two weeks at most. So I think Log- last- Logan Ryan's probably more of a concern. Jadavion Clowney's probably more of a concern. The guys that have been sitting since free agency uh, and have not signed as opposed to uh, uh, Warford, I would think. And about Logan Ryan... Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I looked at his stats. At first, I was really high on him, and I'm like, how is he not signed? But then I realized if the guy is still available till now, I feel like there's something wrong. So apparently I found out that he did let up a, a good amount of touchdowns, and he was burned quite a few times last year. Who was that? Sorry, I missed it. Was that Logan Ryan? Oh, about Logan Ryan, I was yeah, wondering yeah. how he was. Yeah. And yeah. apparently I, I did some digging, and apparently he got mm. – um, he got burned quite a few times for touchdowns last year. He did, but I think he – so he got – he definitely had a lot of touchdowns given up, but I think he was one of the more, like, highly thrown-at corners in the league. So I, it's sort of a weird um, – I don't want to say catch-22, but it's sort of a weird stat where it's it doesn't necessarily tell you the full picture of it. Like, I think he's – I think he's good. I think I do see him more as like a Brian Poole compliment more than I see him as like an outside guy because he rushes the passer as well. Um, but I think cornerback's just such a big issue. I don't think our cornerback position would be bad if we added him. I think we need to improve that or edge rusher. Those are the positions I'd look at more than like a Larry Warford or a Jason Peters. I think defense is, is more my focus right now. I'd be fine with adding him. I, I would be mm-hmm. just not the price he's asking for. Well, yeah, he's he wants like eleven million, I think, according to the Miami Herald. I think I saw what was it loyal New York Jet fans? I think put something out about that. Yeah, and also I, I also he has like a sixty percent completion percentage when balls are thrown at him. So I mm-hmm. mean, that's like six out of ten times you're being thrown at him. That's a completion that could go for a touchdown. So I mean, yeah, that's I could that's going to be a problem. Like I think when I was looking into him, a lot of the the cornerbacks are around the 50% range, so it's going to be a little bit higher maybe with Logan Ryan. But if he's a better corner, maybe he's facing a better caliber of wide receiver. Like, you might have to look into that a little bit more. If, uh, you know, when Brian Poole faces the number one wide receiver on the other team, what's his percentage against, whereas Logan Ryan probably is not versing the number three or number four guy on the field ever. All right, and the last thing I just wanted to ask you, are you planning on going any games, assuming that the COVID-19 thing is settled down by then? I would like to. I mean, I've I've always enjoyed going to the games. I had season tickets for a long time. I would love to go to the games and be able to enjoy them, but I'd, if, if we're not at full capacity, I don't think I'm going to want to go to the games because having a half-hearted you know, 25% jet chant is going to be pretty lame. And if that's the case, I'd rather just sort of stream the game here, watch it with you guys, and hang out that way. Yeah. All right, brother. Thank you so much for calling in. Keep on drinking that White Claw. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Thank you very much. Chris Prado, what do you think we do with Kicker? I think we bring in some competition. I think that's definitely going to be what's going to have to happen with our New York Jets. Uh, I think think we're not done there. I think Meyer and I think – Ficken are going to duke it out. I could see us bringing in a third kicker for the preseason. Punter-wise, we should all be excited for Braden Mann. Braden Mann looks like he's going to be very good. The guy's got a monster leg on him. Guys, if you're not done so already, head down into the description down below if you want your chance to win a hat, shirt, or mug from the Jets Talk store. Down in the description, click on the Twitch link. Just follow me on Twitch. I'm going to select someone of my Twitch followers. 
to win a hat, shirt, or mug in the next 10 minutes. Alex, hey Ryan, I know I barely come to your streams these days, but I haven't forgotten about you. Alex, one of my favorite Giant fans. Thank you so much for tuning in. Means a lot. Keith. Keith, what's up, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. How we doing? I'm hanging in there. What's on your mind? Uh, so, I, you just mentioned Braden Man. I'm, yeah. I was going to ask you about him. I think this guy's going to be a freak. And oh, I, yeah. I'm I hoping, hearing... like, Pro Bowl kicker, like, punter. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I was hearing that the only downside that people are saying about him is that he outkicks his coverage. Yeah, that was, the, like... that was the negative. It was like he kicks the ball too far that the other team can return it. Right, exactly. So uh, I'm very excited about that pick. But I want to ask you, um, besides, I guess, Becton and Mims, who I think that's who all these Jets fans are really excited to see play this year because our offense, if the line plays well enough, you know, I think the offense can be pretty pretty decent if they protect mm-hmm. Sam. But, sure. um, like, besides that, who do you, what draft picks are you most excited to watch? So aside from Mims and Becton, I would say Jabari Zuninga is definitely – he would be number one, I think. Bryce Hall I'm looking forward to. And I, honestly, Braden Mann, I really – I as weird as it sounds, I want to watch the punter, like, kick the ball really friggin' far <laughs> and, like, be good at it. Um, but, yeah, I would say the edge rusher, Zuninga. I like Huff. I don't know if he's going to – or, uh, sorry, not Huff. I like Bryce Hall, but I don't know if Hall's going to be uh, – like a staple until maybe later in the season when we sort of when we saw bless Austin kind of come on. Um, mm-hmm. So Zuninga is really the guy that I'm, I'm kind of looking at aside from Mims and um, Becton. Yeah. I think um, the guy I'm really looking forward to seeing is Ashton Davis. That was my other choice. I was going to kind of say that, but I think I'm, I don't know. After talking with, Joe blew it. He was talking about some of the the mistakes that Davis had made in college, and when you look at his All-22 film, it's a little more concerning than than what we may have thought we were getting out of an early third-round pick. So maybe that's why I'm a little bit down on him right now. I do want to see him play well because I think he's going to be the heir apparent to Marcus May because I think we're going to trade May or we're going to let him walk at the end of the year. Right, yeah. I'm, I'm, when they picked him, I was like, why are we, why are we taking a safety at first? Mm-hmm. And then... I was watching his tape, and I was like, this guy, is, he might be pretty cool to watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, like, it's... He's just flying he's, around everywhere like he looks cool. <laughs> he's got a lot of upside from what it looks like, and it looks like he's more of a free safety than what I envision May as. Like, I feel like May is a strong safety that has learned to play free safety, where right. Ashton Davis could be a free safety that is going to develop into a very nice free safety, especially being, right. like, you know, way cheaper than what we would eventually have to sign may for anyway assuming we sign jamal yeah i'm, I'm really excited to watch all these guys in the secondary with greg williams this year we, oh yeah I, we picked up so many cornerbacks and undrafted free agents and you know bryce hall in the draft mm-hmm. and that ashton davis and if we got logan ryan like there's just so many weapons he has now to play around with yeah i think that greg williams this year with avery williamson with uh, C.J. Mosley with uh, some of the, the extra players that we've added to this roster through the draft. I think this team's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And I think even with a harder schedule, we could see this being a top 10 defense. It's the, the, This entire team, really, like I have no fear in whatever Greg Williams is going to do. My biggest fear is what Adam Gase is going to do. So my eyes are almost going to be exclusively on the offensive side of this ball. If we can see... Sam Darnold develop and we could see this offense really start clicking. I'm going to have way more confidence and you know, then I'll start kind of pounding my chest a little bit more as a Jet fan. Right. So in the in the worst case scenario where if the Jets don't do well this year and Gase gets fired, who are some mm-hmm. candidates for coach that you would like to see? I think Eric Bieniemy is definitely going to be in the in the wheelhouse as far as what That's people my guy. Yeah, a lot of people like him. I'm not against him at all. I think he could be a great option. I always thought that Andy Reid kind of called the plays, and that could be why Biennemi never really 
caught on because the last two off seasons he should have been considered like the guy to hire and that just kind of wasn't the case um yeah i don't know it, there could be other coaches that sort of pop up but i want adam gase to be here long term because that means whatever he's doing is working and i i just have a hard time i don't know i i don't want to see sam darnold in another offensive system as much as like yeah that's really what i want to see i want to see some consistency i want to see this offense work well like i see Peyton Manning back up Adam Gase. I see Frank Gore back up Adam Gase. I see Demarius Thomas back up Adam Gase. And all these players, uh, they have a lot of respect around the league. So it seems like he's not as bad as I think Jet fans want to make him out to be. So I'm hoping, hoping that Gase is the answer at head coach. Yeah, I, I hope so too. We're we're all hoping. <laughs> oh yeah, fingers crossed, brother. Anything else you want to ask before I uh, eject you? No, you can eject me, man. It was nice talking to you. I I appreciate you taking the call. Awesome. Good stuff. Thanks so much for calling in, brother. I appreciate your time and uh, just wanted to talk some sports with me. I'll do some of these even when we don't have some jet topics coming up. I'll do one that's maybe a a Monday call-in show where you guys can tell me all about your favorite jet memory or why you became a jet fan, uh, all that sort of stuff. Because I got nothing but time. We started talking, Beck and I started talking about the whole uh, cooking segment we'd like to add to the channel i have some food ideas I actually have all these and i'm trying to figure out if i want to do something in a week by week fashion and relate it to like some of the football teams we're playing or if i'm just gonna say the food that i i like so we'll see Ooh, my boy chris from florida chris from florida what's up brother what's up get fans let me do your like and subscribe and always comment on this channel we all here for the jets we are here to go to the playoffs, baby! Woo! Let's go! I love it. What's on your mind, dude? What are you thinking about free agency? Are there any players that you're kind of eyeballing right now? Oh, man, as soon as I saw that the Saints release that boy, ooh, oh, it was like, it was like free gold from a leprechaun. I was oh, like, yeah. Man. Dude, I really, I like Warford. I like the potential of signing him. I, I think it's going to be a little tough. Like, we brought back Alex Lewis. You bring in Van Roten. Is that guard position maybe a little too crowded? Or can we yeah. swap out Winters and bring in a Warford? Is that is that too many new pieces? Who knows? That's, um, that's a good question. And, since, and here's the thing. Since if we were going to keep Winters, it would have most likely been for a uh, – for not a lead position, but we would have, like, rotated him. Because it was obvious that Vaughn was going to take over. Oh, yeah. You know? But now, since uh, since he's at, since this guy from the Saints is asking for less than what we already have contract over Winters, I feel like we can do somewhat of the same thing. Like they'll still be under competition with each other, but I think like he'll be understanding because he was already uh, a cycled guard before. He got, oh yeah. He didn't get a choice this time. He was already comfortable with what's going on with the Saints and their plans, but the Saints realized, hey, we don't have. We spent too much money, and we got too many things. So let's move aside. And he's like, well, if it's going to be the same thing as the Saints, I don't really have too much of an argument about it, you know? Sure. So I really think it's best if we cut winners, definitely sign this guy. As far as the Ryan Logan thing, Mm -hmm. uh, I really would like to sign him. However, I do feel like he's going to ask for too much of a high price, and knowing that we are still – in need for positions such as edges, I would rather go for Peters. Yeah, I think Peters is uh, is the guy I would have wanted had we not gone with a left tackle in the first round. Right now, I have a hard time bringing him in, paying Fant what we're paying Fant, and allocating our first round draft pick towards a left tackle. So Warford, right. on a position sort of standpoint, makes more sense to me. But I think I like the player in in Peters. If Douglas wants to do something how like the Eagles sort of did it, where it was uh, Peters and then Andre Dillard sat for a year behind him, maybe that's what we see and that's how you get Peters in here. But I, I would like to believe that we'll see Becton play and we'll actually get to see a, an entire season out of him. No, I agree too. I feel like Becton, Becton's definitely going to prove something, and you know it's going to be awesome. I, I really feel. 
with Vex, and you're going to see a, a, a train just rolling by, and you hear that ringing bell coming from behind the train. And oh, yeah. Why through that defensive line? He's just going to bulldoze over people, and that's what I can't wait to see is there's so oh. much more strength there and leverage compared to anyone – that's going to be on the defensive side of the ball. Like, yeah, the players are going to be a little bit bigger because they're NFL players compared to college players. But, man, that dude's going to just bulldoze over guys. So let's say that Bell has his best career by far. Like, he brought up numbers like he was back with the Steelers this season. Do sure. you feel that the team will reconsider cutting him even though his contract is already so is already at its limitation? Or do you feel like they'll try and still move on? Because now that he's got something to prove, like mm-hmm. if he actually he's got the tools now. He has no excuses. Uh, sure. Of course, uh, that's, if, that's if Adam Gates doesn't use them wisely, of course, as well. But let's say we see all the the Beckton is being that train, and he open up those pockets, and Le'Veon Bell puts up those numbers. Now, what mm-hmm. would you do in the position of the franchise and being GM? Oh man, so. If I'm the GM and you're saying after this season, what would I do? Or for this season, what would I do? Exactly. So you have Bell this entire season. There is no yeah. trade, no no, no cutting whatsoever. You have Bell the entire season and he puts up the exact same numbers or just a little bit better than he did during his prime during when he was with the Steelers. Sure. You know? So if, if that were me and I'm looking at that, situation and how much we're paying bell we have like i want to say 60 million dollars right now for next year's cap maybe 80 million dollars somewhere in that wheelhouse before cutting bell i would hold on to him if we don't have to use his money towards some other player the same way that i sort of hold on to williamson and i sort of hold on to winters like until you need to use that money that they're taking up don't cut him just hold on to him it makes the locker room stronger and you know if if you have to use that money, then you make the move and you cut him. But I I just have a hard time seeing Bell, no matter what he does. I mean, if he really goes off, if he's like, you know, 1,700 all-purpose yards or something silly like that, the Jets, it's going to be a hard thing to try and cut him. But oh, when you absolutely. hear... Absolutely. I mean, what, he'll be valuable at that, though. Sure. Right. So, again, like I said, that's the question right there. I think my only other question from that is, sure. you know, I saw when, I heard when people were saying about, like, well. Say that one more time. I kind of I lost you a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, I think what I heard was, what would you do with the team you have currently and say you have five of your top player choices to, mm-hmm. to put in from the past of, from the past teams of the Jets Yes. You put it there. I feel like someone told. I don't know if someone already said this, but Klecko was definitely not mentioned in my in my ear. So mm-hmm. I was like, you you want to talk about an off uh, a player? Klecko is like someone who's in the Hall of Fame thing. And yeah. I just wanted to know what was, what was your top five players to like enter into either defense or offense uh, with this team right now and the choices of the players. You know. If we were to plug in any player for oh, hold on one second. Hold on one second. I got to uh I got to ban someone from this page right quick. Uh-oh. Um wait, how did this person get back in? I don't know how it got back in. I'm a little confused. Unhide user from this channel. I hid whatever. Sorry. Um Patriot hackers. They're Patriot hackers. Patriot. They're trying to find they're trying to find the plans and schemes. Dang you, Belichick. Patriot hackers. What, what was the question, dude? The, the top five players that I would add to this current roster? If I'm looking at yes, this sir. current roster, it's got to be Darrell Revis at corner. Uh, you look at maybe wide receiver with like an Al Toon or someone like that. I love Wayne Corbett, but he's he wouldn't make this team for me right now. I mean, maybe you swap him out for Crowder, but I think it's not as big of an upgrade as maybe – like a, a Winston Hill might be at left tackle or uh, Darrell Revis would be a cornerback. Revis has got to be up. I would say Revis, Mangold, Gastineau, or Klecko. Um, yeah, that would those would be kind of the guys I'd look at. I don't know oh, if I could pick five. I got, 
All right, man, I'm going to let you go. But one more thing. Stay with me. J. J. E. T. S. Jets. 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 <laughs> Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you so much for calling in. And you are ejected from the cockpit. All right, guys, if you have not followed me on Twitch, down below in the Jets Talk 24-7 description down below, follow me on Twitch, get yourself entered to win a hat, shirt, or mug from the Jets Talk store. Uh, Jack Peters, they're using a proxy to create unlimited accounts. Not easy to get rid of those types of users. Oh, well, I appreciate you guys banning them because uh, that's a little frustrating. It sucks that those guys want to be pains in the butt that's all right sbc comedy you've been all right ryan i have a youtube channel and even though i'm a bills fan i know a lot about football and i want to do a collab with you if you're interested could i dm you over instagram yeah you could dm me i don't necessarily do a ton of uh a ton of um collaborations per se but uh yeah i'd be i'd be down to do some kind of something or other this man is staying in time out <laughs> thank you not your average Jets, uh, or TJ Decker, or whoever person you are at this point. I feel like every single week you're changing your name. Um, all right, let's pick a winner from the channel. Uh, where's my followers list? I will get this. All right. So, guys, let me know a number one through five. And then a number one through ten. And I will kind of go through this and see who I can pick from the Jets Twitch. Jack says pick me. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I got a I got a raffle. It's got to be somewhat, somewhat uh, random. How do you not list Curtis Martin? Well, because we have Le'Veon Bell. That's the only reason I didn't have Curtis Martin. I had Curtis Martin in my earlier one, and then people yelled at me for having Curtis Martin. Uh, four and forty-seven is not between one and ten. Charlie, come on go let's go four and two wow we got a bunch of numbers 69 andrew that's a great number sorry all right all right the winner of the hat shirt or mug from the jet stock store is going to be the lame cactus the lame cactus reach out to me on social media one of my platforms uh, and let me know your information so I can get you your hat shirt or mug from the jet stock store. All right, guys, it's been a lot of fun. I love talking sports with y'all, but I think it is about time for this man to go to bed. I've got work early in the morning, so that is going to be it for me. It's been a lot of fun. I will see you guys next week on the cockpit. J-E-T-S!